talk about is the types of platform that we have on a Palo Alto system. So this will be basically talking about the VMs and the physical appliance. And also what options we have there with the cloud. plus cloud you can say so that would be part of the vm i guess yeah so it has virtual appliance that can be deployed in public cloud or private cloud and also hybrid clouds and also in the branches or in the devops environment so that basically means we have vms we have physical appliances and also solutions based on cloud nowadays i mean cloud is very much famous so this has to be there right so in most cases the goal is going to be to provide segmentation of the application and of course to enforce our security policies in those different types of environments but in this case the idea is that it's going to be your vm right that you will have to install and also manage to provide the protection and that is what our lab is going to be focused on right? the vm and this is opposed to Prisma Access types of firewalls deployed with a cloud-based firewall service that you can purchase. So this is a new feature or new product from of Palo Alto Prisma Access. This is basically nothing but a, a firewall as a service in the cloud. Yeah, so firewall as a service. Yeah. So what you can do, you will be, um, I mean, able to enforce your policy using your individual clause based firewall instances that you will be able to manage as a customer directly from the cloud, or you can add these Prisma access firewalls to your Panorama infrastructure. If you have Panorama is again, a management, um, I mean, infrastructure that Palo Alto has and all other firewalls, they do have the same thing, um, but with different name, the FTD has FMC checkpoint has SMS and other firewalls do have their managers right so palo alto is a manager for the uh, panorama is a manager for the palo alto devices so you can add the prism access uh, to the palo alto panorama infrastructure as well and so this is a palo alto cloud in this case the firewall is provided as a service as i said it is possible to deploy physical appliances as well so we have physical appliances as well so they have got the i mean the different types of uh, ranges so you would have the 200 ranges and the 800 ranges which are called the low end series and then you have the 32 i mean 3000 series as the mid range and you can have the 5000 and the 7000 in the high ranges what these ranges means is you will have basically more throughput more number of sessions more number of uh, interfaces so hardware as well as feature wise uh, you will have more capacity on these firewalls when you go from low end to high end yeah so let's look into a uh, i mean document which is from palo alto if you go and search for this on the google you will find this document right firewall and appliances so you can see um, the firewalls here so you have the generations here you can just click on one of the generation to see the um, i mean the ports and the availability of connectivity on the on the, the firewall devices series or the device so we see on the 400 series they are the small firewalls the the low end range firewalls right and if you go down you can just take a look at the um, i mean the uh, setup connection or getting started with uh, documents they have with the uh, particular series of firewalls so let's go and read the installed pa firewall and when you go here 
you should be able to see some of the fire, uh, I mean, documents related to the firewall. So let's, so they are, this is talking about the installation of the firewall on a flat surface, on a wall and like that. So what you get in the box, right? Um, all those stuff is covered in this, uh, in these documents. So depending on the type of firewall you get, you can just download and have a look at the type of um, installation that you can do and also the type of um, interfaces or the feature wise also, you can look into this uh, documents, right? So this is the, uh, the type of firewall that you have as a PA410. So you can install it on the wall as well. Let's go and have a look at the other firewalls. Uh, so the, this is the 4000 setup a firewall connection. Let's see how um, this shows to connect a firewall. And uh, so this is basically uh, taking me through the steps of connecting a firewall. So this also connects uh, ZTP, zero uh, touch provisioning. That is again a concept of um, the SD van. Uh, so these are the small files. When you move on to the 5000 series, you can see the big chassis based firewall. So obviously you'll get more number of ports, uh, more number of, uh, I mean, throughput as well. Um, and then you have the 800 series, which are much more, uh, I mean, bigger than the 400 series. But then you have the 7000 series. So you can go into this document and uh, go over the types of uh, firewall devices they have with uh, which is based on the i mean uh, the physical appliances right uh, but when you move on from the low end to high end you will have basic uh, the basic difference would be the uh, difference between the throughput and uh, the number of ports and the connectivity um, uh, of the firewall right and also you have these ion devices. These are, these are basically the uh, SD WAN devices, which is called the Cloud Genics in, uh, with respect to Palo Alto. So these are the edge devices, ion. Um, yeah, so that is out of scope, but yeah, just to know that these are the next gen, um, which supports the SD WAN. And these are the uh, appliances you will be getting, MCDs. So yeah, you can just go through this, these documents. You also can compare the uh, firewalls. If you click here, you can compare certain uh, models of the firewalls. And this will also show you the throughput and all those stuff here, right? So this is basically a very good uh, place to be to compare the firewalls. So for example, I have a uh, 5200 series firewall. I can click compare here and this will be added to the filter. You can see here and let's compare this with the uh, 7,000 and also let's see, do we have any, um, I mean, low range firewalls. Let me just go here and I, I can also compare them to the VMs. Yeah. VM series. So let's compare this with, uh, with a 410. Yeah. And let's compare now with the three. Now, when you have three firewalls in the, um, comparison, you can just go and hit compare. Okay, let me just hit compare here. And let's see the difference. Yeah, as I said, the difference would be the throughput, right? So throughput basically is dependent on all the uh, engines. So these are the engines, right? On the performance tab, you can see app ID, threat prevention, IPsec VPNs, connections per second. So these are the engines. App ID is an engine, threat prevention is an engine, IPsec is an engine. So um, when you go and check the 7000 series, it has a 400 Gbps app ID firewall throughput, while as the 5000 has only 60 Gbps. When you go down to the low end, it has only 1.3 Gbps. So this is how you can compare the firewalls and check what your organization needs based on the performance. Yeah, and max number of sessions as well. You can see the difference, right, between the high end and the mid range and the low end. So you have 48 million uh, sessions, max sessions to 245 million max sessions. And here it's like 32 lakhs, I think. Um, and 64,000 here in the low range. And the, also the policy. So you can see there is not, not much difference in the uh, low or mid range and the high range, 65,000 policies here both. But when you go to the low and uh, uh, series, it has only 500 policies. Uh, so security rule schedules, that is same. 
then you go to the nat rules there is a difference which you see in the lower end and the mid and the high range decryption also you see this uh, difference between the low and the mid range and likewise you can see sd wan rules if you're going for sd wan and those stuff right so this is a very handy tool which you can you can use to compare the firewalls that you are going to buy for your organization um, and this is how you compare the products and see the difference between the products so yeah nice okay now before we finish before we finish let me just close, close this uh, this session, right? I want to take a look at some of the architectural components of parallel to system. The feature that we uh, boost most about is that, uh, as I said in the intro, right? It it's, talks about um, the most is SP3, which is called the uh, sorry SP3, which is called the single pass parallel processing. Parallel process. This is basically based on the hardware of the Palo Alto, which is unique from any other firewall, right? Uh, some people just abbreviate um, this as single pass. That is also the same. Okay. Now, what does this mean? What does this mean? So let me just again uh, clear this canvas and let's say I type again SP3. So we know the uh, topic here, right? SP3. Okay. Uh, what does this mean? This is basically a firewall's capability of performing simultaneous traffic classification and enforcement on the packet as they go through the firewall. So when a packet goes through the firewall, um, it can on the fly, I mean, just simultaneously classify the traffic in just one sort of like one cycle. Okay, so the idea is going to be to use multiple string based signatures. So what they use is in, in the back end, you have all those engines, right? App ID, um, user ID, content ID. Yeah, content ID, your filtering, which is uh, basically done with content ID. So what they're going to do is use a single um, sorry multiple string based signature that will be built specifically for the individual engines that you have enabled on the firewall device and those signatures will be applied at once to the packet as it traverses through the unit for the end result of doing something like this um, is going to be the heavily reduced latency so um, i mean the latency will be reduced um, and also it will increase the performance, uh, which is based on the fact that this happened once within a single round, which is as opposed to platform offered by other vendors, which is when you enable additional engines to the control communication, those checks are performed one by one instead of uh, once initially as what happens on Palo Alto platform. Just to um, again uh, explain this. So what happens is uh, there is one packet, right? So what happens is you get uh copies to all the three engines and they provide the so at the same time they um analyze the traffic and then they provide the traffic to go through the firewall at the same time while as if you have a device which is let's say an asa and it has again um uh ips solution uh, which is attached to it. So first what will happen is it will um, process the firewall to process the traffic, then it will send the traffic to IPS to process it, and then it will send, send back to, uh, to the firewall and then the firewall forward the traffic. So this is like one by one, right? But this is like simultaneously. So this is the SP3 engine, which um, pa Palo Alto boost about. Okay, Palo Alto also use the concept of traffic planes. Uh, which is what logical dis, dis, uh, logically describes the grouping um, sort of network functions and protocols. In case of uh, Palo Alto, this, this concept is uh, very important because um, it also relates to the actual hardware resources and allocation of these. Um, uh, so basically with the Palo Alto boxes, we uh, have two planes, uh, which, are, which is the, we, we basically have three planes. If you say you have, management you have control you have the data right you have the data 
So these are three planes that uh, Palo Alto devices have. But what we are talking about right now is the control and the data plane. Uh, the, the PA systems, they were built with resources separated uh, between these planes, uh, which means you have uh, one sort of memory, uh, one set of uh, memory and disk space allocated for the uh, control plane, and then a separate set of uh, resources allocated for the data plane. So, uh, so you have two planes, right? The, just forget the management right now. The, so you have the control plane and you have the data planes. For, so what happens in the uh, Palo Alto hardware, you have a different uh, CPU and storage for this control plane. And again, a different set of CPU for this uh, data plane and the control plane. So this uh, provides tremendous uh, stability. Um, so so uh, I mean, stuff like routing protocols, uh, like STP, like R, plus also in case of PN is the management protocols, including logging and reporting traverses through the data plane, right? Uh, so they traverse through the data plane. And, and what happens and the reason that this separation is important is that any type of event that could potentially affect your control plane, like maybe you uh, want to use, um, want to say generate a, a report that is very high CPU intensive. Uh, this is never going to affect the data plane. So if, if your CPU really goes high uh, in the control plane, right? And um, and your data plane is still functioning properly, and vice versa. When you got a lot of inspection in the data plane, uh, I mean, if if this data plane is too much um, overwhelmed with the with the inspection and all, this is not going to affect the control plane. And likewise, you have the management plane that is separate. So that this is the, I mean, so from the point of hardware, um, uh, the Palo Alto is really stable because of this uh, architecture only. So just um, a point to remember that they have a different uh, set of uh, um, CPUs and uh, storage disks allocated to different planes, right? So uh, I hope you understand understood this uh, concept uh, uh, very well uh, and uh, i would uh, thank you to uh, for watching this video and uh, see you in my next video so thank you bye bye